everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Osan Arsoy, and I will talk about the transaction propagation on permissionless blockchains. Uh, I'm a PhD student at TU Delft and also a member of Delft Blockchain Lab. Okay, here's the outline of my talk. First, I will briefly visualize the transaction propagation, and then I will mention the problems which are inherited from the peer-to-peer -peer structure of the blockchains, and then I will mention our proposal for these specific problems and conclude my talk. So, first I want to talk about why are we focused on the permissionless blockchains. You all know that the permissionless blockchain doesn't have a access structure, which means that anyone can, can join and leave the blockchain network simultaneously without any kind of authorization. And this could lead to some problems. And for, this, for that reason, we have uh, some requirements to maintain the functionality of the permissionless blockchains. And these uh, characteristics, uh, properties of uh, mechanisms should are uh, first civil proofness, which means that the participants in the network shouldn't benefit from introducing a fake and dummy nodes into the network. And the second one, the, uh, the mechanism should be incentive compatible, which means that there should be an incentive to actually run this protocol for the users in the network. Okay. Uh, in, in the talk, I will use the transaction terminology, but you can assume that the transaction is, can be a smart contract, as in Ethereum, or a just a man transaction, as in Bitcoin, or anything you put onto the blockchain. And we have a clients who, make, who create these transactions, and miners who validate these transactions actually run this process. And we are assuming that each node in the blockchain network is capable of making transactions and also uh, being a miner at the same time, but they don't have to do both of them. So it's general assumption. So how the transaction actually propagated and validated? Here we are seeing a, a blue client who, makes, who creates a transaction and propagate his neighbors, some of the miners in the network. And these miners propagate this transaction throughout the whole mining network. And the same thing is done for the other red client and all the other clients in the network. And after the propagation and advertisement of these transactions, what happens is that someone solved the puzzle or like in the Bitcoin or already the round leader of that round, which creates the block, includes some of these transactions and uh, propagate the same transaction block again throughout the whole network. So what are the problems uh, inherited in this propagation? First problem is that the client assumes that the miners, the neighbors of the clients, are ha uh, happy to help this miner and happy to propagate this transaction. But they are not because there is no in, uh, incentive to propagate this transaction because the miners in the network, they are rational and they are trying to maximize their profit. And in order to maximize your profit, actually there is an incentive to not propagate the transaction because the more uh, nodes in the network knows the, this transaction specifically, then the more competition you have for earning that specific transaction fee. And the other problem is the routing problem. Well, it's actually not a problem, but the efficiency, inefficiency of the system. As I mentioned before, each transaction is propagated throughout the network, advertised to all miners in the network, and then it's validated by the round leader and uh, the block generated and the, the same block including the same transaction is propagated again, which means that the same transaction is propagated twice throughout the network. Okay, these are the problems uh, I'm focusing on this work. And first, let's start with the incentive problem. So as I mentioned that there's no incentive for propagation 
And in the existing uh, blockchain systems, the, there's an incentive for validation, which is the mining process. So what we are trying to do here is uh, adding an incentive for also the propagation mechanism. And for that, we are going to use the incentive instrument uh, in the existing blockchain net uh, systems, which is the transaction fee. And we will show that the rational nodes will propagate the transactions by using the game theoretical analysis. Okay. Now let's formally, informally define what we are looking for. We are looking for a fee sharing function which will share the transaction fee among the propagators and also the validator, which is the round leader. And this function, as I mentioned at the beginning, should provide the two uh, characteristic properties, which are game theoretically soundness and also civil proofness. Uh, before I go into the, our model, uh, I want to mention the previous works and Babiov and his colleagues, uh, they first uh, point out this prob uh, lack of incentive problem and they analyze the tier structured networks uh, for the fee sharing, which uh, simply uh, means that each node having the transaction do not compete against the common neighbors, but rather it's the tier structured network. And they analyze the almost uniform fee sharing functions and show that it, it provides the civil proofness and game theoretical soundness for the tree structures. And recently there's another work, there has been another uh, proposal which focuses on the different structure and they only focus on, in this work, they only focus on the competition uh, among the nodes who have the transaction and they always assume that uh, there's a common node and they are trying to com uh, compete against the common node. And in our uh, fee sharing function, uh, we don't assume the, uh, any network uh, specification. It's not uh, just a tree structure. There, there can be common neighbors or there can be uh, distinct neighbors. And we are trying to formalize the fee sharing function. Okay, what we have is a, a fixed fee determined by the client F. And we are trying to divide the fee among the propagation paths. So uh, let me uh, explain the notation here. The FIK here, the uh, sub subscription, uh, uh, the subscript of the F uh, is the index of the location of the node in the propagation path. And the superscript uh, is the length of the path. So FIK here is denot denotes that uh, the length of the propagation in total is K and the share of the uh, i node is denoted by FIK. Now let's uh, look at the uh, civil proofness property. If we look at this example where the client uh, sends this uh, transaction to the node N1 and it propagates through the node NK, and at the end the node NK is the round leader who creates the node, uh, the block and adds this transaction in that block. And in order to discourage the node NI in this uh, propagation path from introducing civil node, we need to have the following condition, which basically says that the introducing civil node will decrease his uh, fee share from the total fee. If, if we only focus on this uh, specific path, uh, we, we need uh, this uh, condition. And what we show that if we apply the same rule for all intermediary nodes, we'll end up uh, with the formula saying that only the first and the last node should be uh, incentive, uh, should be given by the, should uh, share this uh, fee. And all of the other intermediary nodes shouldn't uh, get any in, uh, reward from this propagation. And which conflicts uh, with our rational behavior. And that's why we can say that it's impossible to actually 
uh, design a civil proof mechanism which uh, which works in any kind of network because for some weakly connected networks we are only uh, uh, we cannot avoid this kind of uh, results so what what we can do is uh, instead of just analyzing independently and individually these all transaction paths the propagation paths of the, uh, transactions we can uh, actually uh, comp make sure that the round leader will choose the transaction for the same transaction will choose the shortest path and by uh, adding this condition we can be sure that the nodes will not benefit from introducing a civil nodes because once you introduce a civil node then the length of the path will increase and because of this competition then the nodes are incentivized to not include a civil node into the system and for the round uh, and for uh, and this rule is basically saying that the share of the round leader should be uh, decreasing while you are while we are increasing the path length and it's the formula given above and for the round leader we have a different equation because we cannot uh, restrict the round leader because in some uh, uh, consensus protocols the round leader round leader is already defined and we don't have a control on their action so we are just saying that adding more nodes uh, civil nodes uh, will not benefit them by uh, the bottom equation and as you can see that the bottom equation is already including the top one so our civil proofness condition is the bottom equation and now we will move on to the incentive uh, compatibility property and for that we define the profit function of uh, each node for each specific transaction which basically computes that the expected profit of a specific node from a specific transaction and what are the uh, cases the node can benefit from a specific transaction one case is the that node is the round leader and he gets the round leader fee which is fkk in this uh, given formula and the other case is he propagates this transaction to his neighbors and one of the neighbors is the round leader and he benefits uh, from uh, propagating that transaction and here uh, i i use the capacity uh, uh, to generalize the uh, system into a proof of work and proof of stake the capacity is basically means that uh, it's in proof of work systems it's the uh, cpu power of that specific node and in proof of stake systems it's the stake amount of that specific node so what we showed in this work is this uh, specific profit function is monotone which basically says that each node will either propagate to all of his uh, neighbors or none of them regardless of their capacity and this simplifies uh, uh, this simplifies uh, our analysis and then we can use this to this uh, to analyze the propagation decision and for that uh, we can construct the uh, following table i i'm not going to go into the details which basically analyze the propagation decision of the node n regarding the decisions of the other nodes and what we are trying to show here that uh, what should be the specific condition uh, uh, providing that the node n will uh, benefit from propagating that specific uh, transaction and if we look at uh, in the both uh, cases uh, we'll end up with, uh, with the formulas uh, saying that if the share of the last node is greater than the capacity of that node over the capacity of the rest of the network then he will benefit from uh, propagation and uh, for that we we are going to use a, a constant capacity value which is c and 
until this point, uh, we analyzed the uh, propagation decision by looking at only the propagation of a specific node, and we didn't consider the result of the uh, propagation actually, which is basically assume that a sender is decided to propagate a transaction, but we don't, uh, until this point, we didn't care if the received uh, node is going to also pro uh, propagate the same transaction or not. And in order to be sure that the propagating node will not suffer from the decisions of the receiving node, uh, we have the following formula saying that actually increasing the propagating uh, path will not uh, decrease the fee of that specific node. So, until now, uh, for, uh, we had uh, uh, civil proof conditions, the first one, and the last two ones are the incentive compatibility uh, conditions. And uh, surprisingly, these three conditions end up in a very specific function which is given uh, in the slides. Basically, what the function does uh, saying is that each node should get the C% percent of the uh, remaining transaction to himself and propagate the rest. And this results in the fee sharing function saying that in a, uh, a well-connected uh, blockchain networks, each rational node having uh, less than C percent of the capacity of the network will benefit from propagation. And for this C value, uh, we can choose the, the number of uh, default uh, connections of each number. Uh, I'm sorry, two over the number of uh, default connections of each node in the network, which is, for example, in Bitcoin, it will be one over four. And in that example, we can say that each node in the Bitcoin network will benefit from propagation uh, if the mining power is, of that node is less than 25% uh, of the rest of the network. And this concludes uh, the incentive compatibility part. And now I will talk about the routing. As I mentioned that uh, in the uh, permissionless blockchains, the routing is first... Uh, done by first uh, advertising the transactions throughout the network and each miner collects these transactions and once these transactions are collected then they are uh, validated and one of the one of the nodes which is the round leader propagates these validated transactions which means that the same transaction is actually propagated twice now uh, can we do it better First, we need to know that the validation uh, propagation is a must because each node in the network needs to store all of the transactions. Well, I, I'm excluding some of the uh, blockchain definitions, but in general, uh, each node, since they, they need to validate all the transactions, they need to store all of the transactions. So the, the propagation of the validated transactions is a must, but the advertisement is not. In a specific uh, consensus models where the round leader can be verified before the transaction uh, block is created, then we can use a smart routing mechanism to uh, reduce the cost of the advertisement. And there are uh, some existing systems. One of them is the uh, Bitcoin NG and the other one is uh, was the first version where the round leader actually uh, can be determined before the uh, transactions are, the block is created, including the transactions. And for this kind of specific uh, consensus models, we can have a two-phase round mechanism, where first we have the recognition phase of the round leader. Basically, the, the round leader uh, propagates a message saying that I am the round leader and here's the proof. And each node will only store the first node who sends this specific message, which means that each node only uh, knows the closest node to the round leader. And after this uh, recognition uh, phase, then the clients can propagate the transactions to all their neighbors. Uh, 
and the, na the neighbors will uh, only propagate the first node they start in the first phase. And as you can see in the example, instead of uh, advertising the same transaction to the all nodes in the network, we only advertise to the round leader. And here we are using multiple routes instead of one route because uh, some of the routes, uh, uh, some of the nodes in this uh, shortest path may go offline or they may be malicious and they want to censor your transaction. So to be safe, uh, we have a uh, multiple routes. And one of the disadvantage of uh, uh, the, the disadvantage of the actually the routing mechanism is actually the very powerful adversary uh, can locate the round leader during the recognition and the transaction phase. And in order to mitigate this problem, uh, some uh, anonymity techniques can be used. And using this uh, routing mechanism, uh, we have a very huge uh, benefit for the benefit. And as you can see in this example, if you look at into Bitcoin-like structure where we have a 10,000 nodes, uh, in the standard routing mechanism, the number of nodes receiving the transaction during the advertisement is 10,000, basically all of them. And in our system, it's uh, less than even uh, 20. And uh, let's... Uh, let me summarize uh, what we did in this work. First, uh, we analyzed the transaction propagation in the permissionless networks. We analyzed the incentive compatibility problem. Uh, we formalized the civil proofness and the incentive compatibility. And we uh, construct the fee sharing function uh, providing these actually characteristics. And then uh, we proposed the smart routing mechanism which increased the efficiency of the bandwidth for the transaction advertisement. And I also want to note that, uh, stress the fact that the, these both schemes can be also used in permissioned blockchain, but because of the characteristics of permissionless blockchains, uh, for example, the incentive part is a must, but the routing mechanism is uh, uh, beneficial for the efficiency. And let me uh, also say some uh, potential uh, future works of this uh, specific, uh, in, uh, specific for the incentive compatibility part. Uh, this uh, work can be extended uh, by adding some additional parameters. Uh, one of them is the cost of the propagation. In this work, we assume that the cost of the propagation is small enough that each node uh, uh, can ignore the actual cost and the other one is that we didn't uh, take into account the uh, limited block size and the other uh, potential extension of this work is the, uh, the effects of this incentive mechanism into the blockchain uh, one of them could be the uh, effect on the network topology because once we have once we introduced a uh, uh, incentive for propagation, then the nodes uh, probably will try to increase the number of their connections to get more uh, propagation fee. And the other one is uh, could be the decentralization effect of this uh, incentive mechanism, because right now the only incentive is the mining the block, and it, which is very difficult. But once we introduce the propagation fee, then the, the nodes may not need to uh, join to mining pools to earn some uh, transaction fees, some shares of this transaction fees. And uh, this uh, concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Other Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, thanks for the talk. I'm a Bitcoin miner, and I would like to know if you have any evidence if um, miners not propagating transaction has been or is a problem for a network? Well, thank you for the uh, really interesting question. Uh, 
Uh, in the in the Bitcoin network, what I can say is that at the beginning, the users, the participants, were really enthusiastic about the uh, concept of the Bitcoin. So they didn't care, and uh, there actually the value of the Bitcoin was also really low. So there there was no point. And right now, uh, the Bitcoin is not a decentralized system. What we have a uh, few pools, so the client is. Uh, uh, the client doesn't need to actually to propagate this transaction throughout the whole mining network. He just needs to reach out to few mining pools, and which is very easy because uh, they have also uh, public uh, IPs. Mm. Um, the problem you are solving with your work is miners not propagating transaction. I would argue that there is no such problem. If I don't propagate transaction, the network doesn't care about that because most of the nodes are non-mining nodes. Um, and the transactions, they don't come from miners, they come from the wallets and the exchanges and they get propagated by non-mining nodes. If I don't propagate transactions, nobody will care and eventually the next mining node will blacklist me. So I don't see a problem with that. Okay, uh, let me try to explain again. What I'm trying to say is that in the Bitcoin, we don't have a, uh, since we don't have a decentralized mining network, the miners who are receiving these transactions are already inside a mining pool. And the mining pool has an incentive to propagate inside this mining pool. And the client doesn't need to reach out to all miners in the network, rather uh, he needs to reach uh, one gateway for a specific uh, or for all of these uh, mining pools. So that's why the propagation problem is not there since it's not decentralized. And for the, for the client nodes who are propagating this transaction, I, I also uh, analyzed in the paper, I didn't mention throughout the talk. Uh, the uh, uh, client nodes who doesn't have a mining power uh, also, uh, don't have an incentive to propagate unless you don't uh, unless you have an incentive mechanism to share this uh, transaction fee. Hi, it looks like your calculation depends on the perfect knowledge of uh, uh, computation capacity of each particular node, either it participates in the routing or not. So, how actually you can collect this information from either? Uh, blockchain which relates of proof of work or proof of stake. Uh, thank you for the question. If I understand correctly, you are asking that uh, each node will decide uh, regarding the nodes who have this transaction and you are asking how they know that, how many nodes uh, having this transaction and how they decide to propagate. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, they can only estimate, and to be safe, I uh, in the example I I just said that uh, for the Bitcoin, if you choose the C equal to one over four, which basically says that if your mining power is less than twenty five percent, which is will be the case for unless you are the biggest uh, mining pool, then you will benefit from propagation. So that's why I choose the really safe uh, C value. Or you can you can uh, play with the C value, but it it's really a uh, network uh, dependent. So thank you very much. <laughs>